All right, we're talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to g of b minus g of a, where this function g is the antiderivative of this function f. And, and this, on the left side, represents the area underneath function f from points a to point b. And I'm going to explain to you why this has to be true, why the area function really is given by the antiderivative. So let's start by picturing a graph here. And let's imagine some function, let me do it like this, okay, some function of x. So here's our x-axis down here. And let's imagine a vertical line drawn at some point x. So here's an x value. And this vertical line defines an area bound by the axis. So this area back here is defined by this vertical line at position x. Now imagine x increasing. What happens to the area as x increases? Well, it's pretty easy to see that as x slides to the right, that area gets bigger. And the question is, how fast? How fast is the area changing as x changes? The thing to see here is that the area is a function of x. How much area there is enclosed right here depends on the value of x. So it makes sense to think of the area as a function of x. And that function will also have a rate of change. As x moves to the right, the area will increase, but it will do so at different rates. Like you can see this value right here. When x is at this value, the, value, the y value of the function is pretty high, so the area will be increasing pretty quickly. And I'll, I'll make a note of that right here. I'll say at this value of x, at this value of x, the a, the area as a function of x, is, is changing quickly. And it's doing so because the, the value of the function, the height of the function is large. But when x gets over here, each little step it takes to the right doesn't enclose as much area because the, the value of the function is low. So I'll make a note of that here. At this value of x, a of x is changing slowly, or let's say it's increasing slowly. Now let's see if we can draw this. The a, the value of a as a function of x, it's going to be increasing the whole time because this function, my function f here, is always above the axis. So as we go to the right, we're enclosing more and more area. We're just doing so at different rates. If the function actually, the function here actually went below the axis, then we would consider some negative area beneath the axis. But as it's drawn here, as x slides to the right, the area always increases. So I'm going to graph a function a as a function of x, and it will always go up, but, but it will go up at different rates. It'll go up um, pretty steeply at a certain value of x, and then less steeply at a later value of x. So let's graph it and make it look something like this. There's our x-axis, and here's the area as a function of x. And it's going to be increasing the whole time. Let's look back here. Notice that when x is 0, right here at the beginning, the total area enclosed at that point is 0. So our graph is going to start at 0. When x hasn't moved to the right any, x is starting out over here, and it hasn't moved to the right any, any at all, the enclosed area, the total accumulated enclosed area is 0. So my graph is going to start down here at 0. And then it's going to increase, the area is going to increase, and at a faster and faster rate until we get to a value about right there. So I'm going to draw my function going up and getting steeper and steeper. Okay, and the steepest, the fastest rate of increase of A corresponds to this peak right here. And then the rate of increase has to come down. A is still going to be going up. The area will still be increasing, but it'll just be doing so not quite as fast. And then it will be increasing most slowly when we get to this value of X right here. It will still be increasing there, but just more slowly. So at about this point, 
is when it's increasing the slowest, and then it increases some more after that at a, a faster rate, maybe something like that. And this, is, this is inexact, but we can find these functions exactly, as we'll see. So the point here is that area is the function of x, and it has um, uh, different rates at which a changes. So here, a is increasing quickly, and this x value here corresponded to the point where f was at a peak. And here, a is increasing slowly. And this x value right here corresponded to the point where the value of the function is at a, at a low point. So what I want you to see right there is that the area is in fact a function of x. The area underneath function f is another function, and it is a function of x. And I'll show you in the next, next video some examples that show that that area function is in fact the antiderivative of f.